Goddess of Victory, Nikkei. Should you nut to it? I, I, I mean, uh, play it. <laughs> All right, so let me go and answer that question for you. But first, let's talk about a few things. So when it comes to Nikkei, it's basically a third-person shooter. Uh, with actually some really damn good-looking graphics, anime style. But when it comes to the actual like gameplay itself, like the one thing you'll notice is, man, these these uh, these developers promise booty, and Chris Redfield, Chris Redfield, damn it, did the, they deliver the booty, man? Like holy shit! Uh, there's quite a bit of jiggly titties and quite a bit of bouncy butts, and uh, you you won't like it. <laughs> but on that, yeah, I mean this game is actually fucking amazing. Um, recently, I've been taking the game a lot more seriously when it comes to the story. Well, that's the main focus, but, you know, let's talk about that later on. Uh, it, like I said, it's, bas it's basically a third-person shooter. Uh, basically, when it comes to gameplay, you got you got a squad of five girls that you put into your team called Nikkei's. They're basically like, um, if anything, I guess they're more like androids, I guess, is what, what, you, what they'd be kind of. I mean, they look human on the outside, but they got like a bunch of mechanical parts on the inside. You know, but they still look hot as fuck, so, I mean, who really cares? <laughs> who really cares, man? <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a cut in here because uh, one thing I forgot to mention was uh, one thing that I wanted to mention when it came to the gameplay aspect is w when it comes to Nikkei's gameplay, there's a it's it it, it can kind of be treated like an idle game, kind of kind of something like Azure Lane where you don't really have to partake in the mission itself. But when it comes to like more difficult challenges or difficult uh, little little objectives, because Nikkei actually has uh, three different kind of like uh, battles, I guess. One is just a normal kill all the enemies and then kill the boss at the end. The second one's more like you have to like hold down the line. Like, there's a, there's like a shield with like it has like sometimes like twenty points of health or whatever, and certain amount of ra uh, certain raptors will do more health. Some will do like one point of damage, one will do five, but the whole point is to basically last out the whole minute and thirty seconds. Then the third one's almost the same thing, except there's like something in the middle surrounded by by a light, and basically there's kind of like a health bar system on the very top. Now, the red represents the raptures, the blue represents, like, I guess, like, your health or whatever for that little device in the middle. But that thing is, you want the blue side to be at least 51% more than the rapture side. Because if, if it's below that, or I think if it's below 50%, then, yeah, you're, you're going to lose the battle. But what, what, what I also wanted to say, too, was what's pretty cool, is depending on those kind of modes you're playing, sometimes you're going to actually have to take control of yourself, whether actually be aiming with a certain kind of character, or actually using the skills at the right time. So that's one thing I really appreciate about Nikkei. It's very, it's more, um, you're, you're, it's more interactive as opposed to something like Azure Lane that I just mentioned. So that's something I really highly appreciate. So, damn, big ass nut on them. But yeah, so let's move on. Um, the next thing I do want to talk about too is the story. Now, like I said, like I just said just a moment ago, the story itself is probably the biggest thing for this game. Uh, I think that's that that might be a bad opinion. That probably might be the second best opinion. Because, if anything, this is definitely more of, like, a waifu collectathon. Like, hey, man, it's they got waifus of all shapes and sizes, man. Like, and I think I said in another video before, I mean, we got, from like, lollies to mommies, yandere's to sundere's. I mean, bro, there is a waifu for everybody, man. So, that's extremely appreciative. I, I really like that. But uh, going back to the topic at hand, which is a story. Bro, the story is, is fucking crazy. I don't want to get into spoilers, but what I do want to mention, since it's, it's basically from the beginning... Uh, basically, it's a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, humanity is living in a place called the Ark Underground. It's basically like the last uh, stronghold for like humankind and shit like that. So that's that's pretty much what it is. And mankind uses these um, these these things called Nikes. I mean, they're basically females, but they they basically go out. You know, some some of them go into the surface with a commander. They basically fight off the raptures, which are like some kind of like just more like robotic, like or I don't know. I guess they're just like robots that just basically like fucked up humanity. And basically, Nikkei's are the only one that can really fight them, because most humans and their fucking firearms, like, they just don't do shit to them, so... Nikkei's are the only one that could use, like, more, like, heavier, fucking stronger firearms and stuff like that. And, and bro, I gotta say, like, that story... If you're, if you're not so much for the waifu thing, I mean, play the game for the story. I, I cannot emphasize how much the story is fucking amazing, man. Like, again, I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but if you really want a good story that you're really gonna invest a lot of hours into... Bro, de definitely try out Nikkei. The story is just, <clears throat> damn, it's on point, baby. So the next thing I do want to talk about is the soundtrack. Soundtrack is, oh, man, the soundtrack is, it's an orgasm for the years, bro. Like, it's just a combination uh, from what I can, from what I've been hearing. It's um, basically a combination of, like, metal and techno. 
And those are definitely one of my my favorite genres of all time. So I fucking love that shit. Uh, sometimes you might even hear some other instruments being played into, like the violin or like an orchestra in the background. Like, you know, actually, uh, right now, let me go and play you a, a couple of tracks and you, you'll get an idea of what the music you're, you're going to be getting into. So let's do that real quick. So after hearing that amazing orgasm for the years, another cut in. Sorry about that, but then, then again, this is the video coming from a guy that basically speaks out of his ass all the time, but oh well. But on top of the amazing soundtrack, uh, when it comes to audio in terms of the um, the, the voice acting, so Nikkei actually has both uh, Japanese and English dub options. If I'm not mistaken, there's even Korean too as well, or other, other voice options. So that's pretty cool if you're someone that, that likes uh, Japanese subtitles and you prefer the Japanese voice acting, go for it. Uh, me, personally, it, it's got to be English dub. And that's a huge thing with Nikki that I really love. Like, uh, man, if, if something like Azure Lane had English dub, I mean, I think I'd probably like, I love Azure Lane a lot more. But as it stands, I'm, Nikkei and Azure Lane are probably like my top two, like, gacha games right now. So that is one thing I wanted to mention. Again, if, if, if uh, depending on the your, pre your preference, I mean, it's got multiple language options, so... Pick your, uh, take your pick and have fun. The next thing I want to talk about is unfortunately something I don't think a lot of people would appreciate about the game. It's not very nutworthy, but I want to talk about the gacha mechanics. So when it comes to Nikkei, uh, basically you you use a currency called gems, basically. And if you want to do a full on 10 pool, you need 3000 gems. Well, unfortunately, when it comes to the gacha mechanics of the game, I would say they're actually kind of shysty. Like you're really not going to get a lot. Like, even if you're a whale, like, you're going to be paying a lot of money if you want to do multiple pulls. But the one saving grace that this game does offer is the fact that uh, during they always seem to have events. And during those events, you basically just do challenges. You play the little side event or whatever. And you'll get these two different types of uh, vouchers. One's just a regular recruit voucher, which allows you to go into the regular recruit banner. Or recruit whatever Nikkei's you can. And the good thing about this banner, there's a wish list. Now, with the wish list... I think, as far as I remember, you can only do the other three factions, which is Elysian, Missilist, and Tetra. You can make a wish list, and I think it might actually increase your probability of getting the characters you want. And that's actually pretty cool. So you put that in your wish list, those are the characters you want to get, and I think you have a higher chance of getting them. So that's pretty cool. However, there's a fourth faction called the Pilgrims. Now, those Nikkeis are these, probably the best of the best, like the strongest shit. Um, and it's cool because that's related to the story. Like the, those pilgrim girls are fucking strong. And without giving more details, basically, if you, if you have a pilgrim bro on your team, you're pretty much gonna be set. Like especially someone like Modernia, Scarlet. Uh, I would even say the new one that just came out, Dorothy, with the current event. Like bro, like the the pilgrims don't fuck around. They are good. But getting back into the topic of the Makacha mechanics, then you have another uh, another banner which is the um, like it's like the special recruitment uh, banner. And again, those you'll, you'll get like, uh, I think a maximum of 10 of them for every little event, little special event. And basically that character focus, you know, you get like a higher percentage rating. But right now, since it's, it's Dorothy, I think you're only getting a 1% chance to get her. Uh, again, man, like if you look at the other percentages for the other pilgrims, bro, they're like less than 1%. Like it's ridiculously low. So good luck getting them. <laughs> but on that, yeah, pilgrims are fucking powerful. That's how the, uh, that's pretty much the gotcha mechanics. Another thing I do have to add too that there is another another way to um, basically recruit uh, new uh, Nikkeis. So when you have friends on your friends list, unfortunately I wouldn't know that I don't have any friends. <laughs> so well, when you have friends on your friends list, uh, basically you can you can ascend and receive something called social points. When you get ten social points, you could recruit one Nikkei. 
when you have 100, you can basically do a full 10 pull. So that's actually pretty cool. And then the next thing I would have to say that kind of that might lose a point for the game is unfortunately uh, there are skins for some of the characters, but they are actually kind of ridiculously overpriced. One of them being like it's a character I really like. Her name is Exia. Uh, unfortunately, her skin it's not nothing too special, but I wouldn't mind it just because it's Exia and I fucking love Exia. But I'm not paying twenty bucks for a skin like that. Like, nah, I'm good. The only thing I would say that might be worth the twenty bucks is actually going for the ones that they have like the it's kind of like a battle pass system they have. It's thirty days. You pay twenty bucks, but you get quite a bit of rewards on top of a skin for that for 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 the character that's featured on that that little season pass. And then the cool thing is too when they have little, those little seasonal or those little events I was talking about the side things you can do, they'll usually put a season pass alongside that so you can get two skins, twenty and twenty dollars uh, basically each, but you're getting some goodies right on top of that. And for me, I think that actually, that's probably like the best the best value you're gonna get while also getting a pretty cool looking skin if you like it. Uh, unfortunately, I missed that noisy skin, but that was some promise of the bank. But oh well, shit happens. So, yeah, um, putting everything together, if I have to give this game, you know, out of a 69 rating, bro, I'm giving Nikkei a 68 out of 69. Again, it really only lost one major point just for the gotcha mechanics and mostly for the ridiculously overpriced skins. But on that, man, I mean, I got to say, you really got to nut to this game. Try it out. It's free to play, uh, PC, uh, mobile, although I, I, I couldn't tell you what phones can actually run that shit because I, I got to play this shit on my laptop because nothing, no phone I have can even run that shit. But on that, yes, please give Nikkei a try, man. If, if not for the characters, oh, well, I mean, mostly for the characters. <laughs> if you want the booty, you're going to get the booty. But, yeah, that's that'd probably be the number one thing. But for me, it's a number one thing between both the, the waifus and the story. I cannot emphasize how good that fucking story is, man. It's worth sticking around, being patient with the game. I really love it. And I really hope these writers keep making a badass story because, man, I am appreciating the shit out of it. So, yeah, uh, overall, yes, definitely nuts in Nikkei. Final rating, 68 out of 69. Big ass fucking nut. All right, well, that was pretty much it. Well, if you excuse me, well, make sure you like, and co comment, and subscribe. Share the video, too. So, if you excuse me, I got to call him to work today. Got to tell my wasp. <laughs> my wasp. <laughs> God, I want to say waifus. I got to tell my boss I can't make it in. Because, unfortunately, the amount of booty on screen made my pee-pee pee too hard. And now it's kind of awkward to walk. Nut.